Hello, good morning, friends. Uh, today we are going to talk about a software-defined storage solution called Hyperscale, uh, which provides uh, resiliency, low latency, and uh, zero backup window uh, for enterprise workloads. Uh, and in the end, we'll talk about a specific uh, NFE use case and see how Hyperscale is providing value addition for NFE workloads. So this is the usual uh, safe harbor legal disclaimers. OK, so as all of us know, OpenStack is very popular. And why it is popular? Because it's open source. It's flexible. We have a growing community of uh, people, a vibrant community. And then uh, those, that community is actually providing innovation. So it's, it's community-driven innovation. But there are three, a few things in OpenStack which are still a work in progress. For example, uh, uh, having an SLA-based uh, storage quality of service, uh, data protection, backup, uh, simplicity, ease of use. So this is where I think still work is going on. Uh, uh, so this is where hyperscale uh, fits in and provides value addition. So hyperscale provides predictable performance with quality of service, workload resiliency, which is matched to needs of the customer, and integrated backup support with a zero backup window. I will go more into that. And then a simple enterprise-ready storage management, which is well integrated with Horizon uh, UI. <clears throat> so in all, what, the, what does the customer get? Uh, agility, faster time to value, and cost effectiveness. So I'll just go briefly into uh, what is the architecture of hyperscale for open, uh, OpenStack. This architecture is what enables us to provide all those value additions. So hyperscale architecture can be divided into a compute plane and a data plane. So a compute plane consists of a set of physical nodes on which the uh, application or customer workload is running. Hyperscale architecture does not restrict scalability. So the, the architecture is built in such a way that you can extend any number of compute nodes based upon your needs. So let's say if, if tomorrow the needs go grow, you can add more compute nodes, more storage, and continue with whatever work you're want, more planning to do. We have quality of service. Now, what does that mean? That means that, uh, let's say, so, so typically, what, what are the problems that, that are asso associated with it? So let's say if you have a customer deployment, you could actually choose to run an enterprise workload along with a workload which is not so mission critical. Now, what may happen is that the, the not-so-mission-critical workload may end up consuming a lot of bandwidth, a lot of IOPS, and end up kind of starving the enterprise workload. This is where hyperscale steps in with its quality of service. So with hyperscale, you can actually set a min IOPS and a max IOPS associated with, with a workload, with a, with a storage. What that means? What that means is, let's say you have not so mission critical workload, you can actually set a max IOPS for that, which means that it can only consume so much bandwidth, IO, IO bandwidth. So this will, not, this will result in your uh, mission critical workload getting whatever it needs to perform effectively. We also have a concept of min IOPS. So you set a min IOPS associated with your mission critical workload. So, it, so that guarantees that it always gets that workload uh, it, 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 all, it always gets that throughput, irrespective of um, whether there's any other workload which is running uh, on the machine. Computer optimization is another asp critical aspect which I want to talk about. So typically, with any, any storage solution, you need to have three copies. And the reason for that is that, let's say, if uh, one of the nodes which is housing a copy goes down, there has to be some way to recover the data. <coughs> Now with hyperscale, we optimize that a bit. So what that means is we don't need to store all the three copies. We don't need to store all the three copies on the uh, on the compute node on which your mission critical applications are running. So basically. Uh, your compute storage is expensive. It you typically tend to use things like SSDs, high, high, uh, uh, high cost storage on your compute node. If you, t if you tend to consume a lot of it, then obviously your cost will go down. 
With hyperscale, what you can do is you store only one copy on your compute node, and the remaining set of copies can actually be pushed off to the data plane or, or, or to the data nodes. And so the, so, so the data node is higher density storage. Uh, it's not too expensive. You, SSDs are not required. You can use whatever uh, SDDs are there, and uh, you can save money, money there. <clears throat> The other thing I wanted to highlight is data protection. So now what you have done is you have actually moved some of your copies to the data plane, or, or which consists of a set of data nodes. Now, with, now those copies can in turn be used to backup. They can be integrated with the state-of-the-art state net backup solution, which is provided by uh, Veritas. The advantage of this is that while your backup is going on from the data plane, your applications on the compute plane continue to run with full performance because they are running on different machines. So this is the advantage, as you can see, which the hyperscale architecture provides. The other thing which I wanted to highlight is SLA-driven resiliency, which means that, let's say, for a particular workload, you, want, you don't want like multiple copies. You want just one copy on the data node. You can configure for that particular workload, you can configure that I just want one copy. Similarly, on the compute node, you can configure similar resiliency parameters. So, so you can decide which workload is your mission critical workload, which, which workload is not so important, and, and choose appropriately. <clears throat> so just double clicking on the compute node, uh, uh, the compute plane. Compute plane consists of a set of compute nodes. It provides quality of service. It provides a reflection. So let me tell what reflection is. So as, as we mentioned, that we can take snapshots backup of your uh, whatever uh, whatever uh, applications are running on the compute node to the data node. So so that is done using. Uh, uh, something which is called as epi episodic data sync, and that happens every 15 minutes. So now what happens to the, so let's say what happens is at time t equal to 15 minutes, you take a snapshot from the compute node to the data node. And let's say at time t equal to 20 minutes, your compute node goes down. So you can recover the first 15 minutes from your data, data plane. But what happens to the last five minutes of data? Do you lose it? Do you end up losing it? So that, that is where this reflection comes in. So what you can do is actually you can push, uh, while, you are, while you are writing data, after t equal to 15 minutes, the remaining data is also written to a peer compute node. So, so at a time, let's say at t equal to 20 minutes, then uh, the, uh, the, uh, you'll have first 15 minutes of data on, on the data node, and the last five, in the last five minutes of data on a peer compute node. So let's say in, in any case your compute node goes down or there is a problem with your storage, you can recover your data from a combination of data node and compute node. So, so reflection is the fact where you are actually uh, protecting rights to a peer compute node, and that is again resiliency driven. So you may, may decide to do it for your mission critical application, may, de may decide to do it may not decide to do it, let's say, for something else. <clears throat> so this is the hyperscale data plane. Again, it consists of a set of data nodes. It stores point-in-time copies, which are, which are taken every 15 minutes. And, and whenever, let's say, the compute node goes down, those copies can be used to hydrate the compute node. Hydration means that you are copying back the data from the data node to the compute node so that your application performance is not impacted. Another advantage of hyperscale, which we mentioned, is its integration with NetBackup. NetBackup is a state-of-the-art backup solution from Veritas, and this enables that you have long-term retention of your data. <clears throat> so, so one thing, just, come, just since we are on, on NetBackup, one thing I just wanted to stress again is the zero backup window, which means that you can schedule your backup anytime, and there's no impact to running workloads. This is because the backup which you are taking is actually being taken from the data node on which your mission-critical applications are not running. They're actually running on the compute node. 
the other other advantage that you have is that you don't need to take backup for for all instances you can actually have backup as a service where only the tenants that have subscribed to that to the backup will actually be backed up for a long term basis <clears throat> all of this is actually well integrated with our uh, horizon gui uh, uh, the gui which is well integrated with horizon and you can do uh, backup and restore using a single click <clears throat> So, so what is hyperscale for OpenStack economics? Basically, what you're doing is that since you do not need three copies on your compute plane, you are reducing your cost on your compute plane, and you are moving those copies to the data plane where the cost of storage is not high. So essentially, you are increasing the compute utilization, increasing your compute performance, and reducing cost. <clears throat> So the hypersales solution is has seamless integration with OpenStack. So what we have done is we have actually contributed to open source using uh, with our Cinder driver, our Nova extension, and uh, our triple load deployment scripts. So what that means is that you can get hyperscale out of the box. You don't need to do essentially much uh, on your own. Now I want to talk about NFV. So NFV, uh, network function virtualization, is gaining grounds these days. Basically, whatever network functions could be accomplished from using switches or, or, or expensive networking equipment can now be realized in software. And you have uh, NFV workloads which are running inside OpenStack managed virtual machines which are accomplishing the same. So it provides cost effectiveness. It provides automation to the user. <clears throat> so hyperscale is actually very aptly suited for NFV workloads. And the reason is that NFV requirements, such as low latency, predictable performance with quality of service, can be easily met with what hyperscale is providing. So, you can divide, so what you can essentially do is you can design a robust NFV infrastructure with hyperscale. So with that, uh, we come to a demo. So in this demo, we'll kind of <clears throat> demonstrate a use case where you have uh, NFE workloads which are running on hyperscale. And we'll perform a live migration and see that whatever storage the workloads were using is not impacted when the live migration happens. And that is being enabled using hyperscale. So what we are doing is we have uh, Clearwater, which is deployed on a set of virtual machines. So you have one, uh, uh, one server and multiple SIP clients. And the SIP clients are talking to the SIP server, to the server. And we are making, uh, basically, IP calls. <clears throat> so this is kind of a stress test which, we, which, are, which is going on. And then we'll trigger live migration and see that the client-server interaction keeps on happening, and the calls are still live. They're not impacted. <clears throat> so we'll go to the demo now. So this is actually the hyperscale UI. Uh, which is integrated with Horizon. As you can see, you can see the compute plane. You can see what is the total performance you're getting on the compute plane. Uh, you, you can see the data plane. What is the storage which is available? What is the storage which is free? What are the snapshots? Uh, how much backup has been done? So you can get like all this information using hyperscale dashboard. <clears throat> So these are instances. Uh, so you have one server instance and multiple clients instances, which are running NFV uh, workloads. This is clear water. So 
So as you can see, there is some uh, workload which is running. The clear water services are running, and they're active. <clears throat> so this is the server. So we are, we are seeing that some I.O. is going on on that server. So these are the SIP requests which are being handled. This is just logs to show what is going on. We'll now go to, uh, we just saw the server now, we'll just go to the clients. So you can see some I.O. is actually going on. These, uh, so basically, the clients are initiating some SIP calls. So what we'll do now is we'll initiate a live migration of the server. So as you can see, the live migration is going on. And when we see the output, uh, we see that uh, I.O.s are still in progress. So even during live migration, IOs are still going on. So this live migration feature is actually uh, enabled using hyperscale. So these are the statistics. So whatever IOs are going on, actually, you can view using our dashboard, uh, which is integrated with Horizon. So that's what we had on the demo. Um, any questions from anybody? OK, thank you, everyone.